going to talk about um, digital storytelling. Um, has anyone in here got any experience of digital storytelling themselves or in their own practices? Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I'll uh, please please do feel free to um, write some. Oh, I can see Rajana, you've written in the chat room. Please feel free to use the chat function as we go through the workshop, so that we can at least be talking to each other a little bit. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a short presentation, but I would like to try and make this workshop a little bit interactive as much as we can. Um, so if you could um, use the chat facility, if you've got any questions at all, put them in the chat. And if we've got, hopefully we'll have a little bit of time at the end to answer any questions you guys might have. Okay, so um, I'm going to start the presentation now. So let me do that um, here. Okay. Can everybody see this? Um, Annika, you might want to be the voice here a little bit because um, obviously I won't be able to see anyone as I'm presenting. Yes, it's visible. Oh, that's Sorry. great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so um, uh, my name is uh, Melania Warwick and I am uh, a researcher at the Storytelling Academy yeah, at Loughborough University. And that is the same um, academy that Professor Mike Wilson was talking to you about earlier. So we are colleagues and we work together um, at that academy. And what we're interested in really is how digital stories can be used for research and practice. Um, and that's really what I want to talk to you about very briefly today in this workshop and hopefully get a bit of your input. Um, if, you, if you do have any questions or you need me to reiterate anything please do use your voice because I can't actually see you whilst I'm presenting so I'll try and come in and out of this presentation mode a little bit um, so we've already heard today about the aims of this particular piece of research the me help study and we, we've heard how you know we were trying to reduce hierarchies of knowledge and reframe expertise around mental health um, through the participatory methods that we use, which included um, community members through creative means. Um, so let me talk a little bit more about how digital storytelling is a useful methodological approach for this kind of work, um, both in its aspirations and, and um, more broadly, how it could be applied to other kind of research studies. So we know that storytelling is very powerful. Um, Professor Wilson talked about that earlier, as did Andy, um, and how it can bring people together. And we also know that, you know, storytelling is a very old um, way of building communities, passing on traditions, practices and knowledge. But digital storytelling is different in that it uses technology to mediate and disseminate its outputs. And given the evolution of the internet, we're now able to publish and broadcast stories more easily and widely. So um, this is uh, an example of what digital storytelling might look like in a lab. Um, here you can see that these people are using um, uh, digital storytelling. It's an, actually, it's an editing software called WeVideo, and we use it quite a lot in our digital storytelling work. It's very, very accessible and uh, quite intuitive as a, as a process. And stories typically have um, a narrative element, a visual element, and then sometimes they have sound, such as music or natural sounds incorporated into the stories. And they are typically between two to three minutes long. Um, so they're quite small multimedia um, stories, pieces of information, really. And they tend to center around one particular experience that a person has had. And that's how we generally 
the format of stories. Um, so let me talk a little bit about um, something that Mike alluded to earlier, which is the purpose and value of storytelling. Um, so we believe at the Storytelling Academy that it's a tool with which it's easier to move towards more democratic and mutually beneficial knowledge creation. So what we do at the Academy is we explore ways in which we might dismantle traditional knowledge hierarchies, which privilege certain types of knowledge over others by ensuring that participants in our research projects feel more like partners and producers in the process of knowledge creation. So um, Mike um, spoke earlier about um, producers of knowledge creation, implementers and consumers of knowledge creation. And you can see that those words are written up here on the, um, on the slide. And what we're interested in doing really is perhaps complicating those roles and asking ourselves how we might blur the boundaries between who typically produces knowledge and who typically consumes knowledge, for example. But also in the other box on the slide, you can see um, that I've written there research ownership. And we're also interested in thinking about who owns the outputs of research and who owns the research questions that are going to be asked. And those are really important things that we are considering. So um, we move on. What I'd like to do now is I'd like to, to show you um, just two examples of stories that we created within this particular project. But I'd like to ask you to do a task whilst you're watching these stories. So what I'd like you to do is to use the chat room to do what we call a tagging exercise. So that is where you, I would want you to watch the story and then write down three words that you feel really describe the experience or understanding that you're getting from watching these two particular stories. So just three words. Um, and you can write them in the chat room. You don't need to write your name particularly, but just the three words. And before we watch the stories, I just want to tell you very briefly how they were created. So these, both of these stories were created by drawing on the testimonies of the lived experiences of clinic users and their supporters in Kerala. And whilst these testimonies are um, personal, what we've done is we've developed them by co-creating stories with, with the actors involved in the project and other visual artists and the research team to all have a, have a, a, a role in developing the story. So for example, the actors actually spoke the narratives of the stories in the stories that you're going to watch. The visuals in the stories were developed by an illustrator in the UK. The narratives themselves were created and co-created with myself and some of our research associates in India. So th this is a co-created story based on a personal narrative. So um, I'm just going to stop sharing because I'm going to see if we can follow this link. Let's see. Okay, so this, this is the first film and it's called Colourful Snakes. So um, what we've done here is we have, um, it's, it's spoken in Malayalam and then we have an English translation running underneath um, in, in the subtitles. So hopefully that means that everyone watching this can access it. So please, as you watch, please put in the comments box, three tags, three words to summarize how you either experience, reflect or understand this story. Uh, can I ask everyone to put themselves on silent, please? Because I think we can just hear. Thank you. If you could all mute your mics, that would be really helpful. Okay, here we go. Sergey, I'm school. I'm going to go to the station. I'm going to go to the station. I'm going to go to the station. I'm going to go to the hotel. 
ഇഡ്ഡലിയോ വെള്ളയപ്പോ ദോശയോ അങ്ങനെ എന്തെങ്കിലും ഒക്കെ വാങ്ങും എനിക്ക് അങ്ങനെ പോവാനോ അങ്ങനത്തെ കാര്യങ്ങൾക്കൊന്നും ഒരു പേടിയൊന്നും ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നില്ല അങ്ങനെ പതിവുപോലെ ഞാൻ റോഡിന്റെ അരികൂടെ ഒരു ദിവസം ഇങ്ങനെ പോകുമ്പോ പെട്ടെന്ന് അവിടെ കുറെ പശുക്കളെ കയറൊന്ന് നിർത്താൻ മേയാൻ വേണ്ടിട്ടുണ്ടായിരുന്നു അപ്പൊ ഞാനിങ്ങനെ പെട്ടെന്ന് നടക്കുമ്പോ ഒരു വലിയൊരു പശു അങ്ങ് എഴുന്നേറ്റ് നിന്നു ഞാൻ അങ്ങ് ഞെട്ടിപ്പോയി പക്ഷെ അതുകൊണ്ട് ഞാനിങ്ങനെ അതിനെ ഓർത്ത് ഇങ്ങനെ പേടിച്ചൊന്നുമില്ല ഞാൻ വിചാരിച്ചു അത് സാധാരണ പശു അല്ലേ അങ്ങനെയൊക്കെ ആലോചിച്ചു പക്ഷെ പിന്നീട് എപ്പോഴാണ് ഇങ്ങനെ എനിക്ക് എല്ലാത്തിനോടും ഒരു പേടി തോന്നി തുടങ്ങിയെന്ന് എനിക്ക് മനസ്സിലാവുന്നില്ല എന്റെ വീടിന്റെ മൂന്ന് ദിവസത്തെ ഒരു കട്ടലുണ്ട് ഒരു ദിവസം ഞാൻ ആ കട്ടിലിരിക്കുമ്പോ പെട്ടെന്ന് എനിക്ക് കഴുത്തിന്റെ ഭാഗത്ത് എന്തോ ഒന്ന് കുത്തുന്ന പോലെ തോന്നി എന്റെ കഴുത്ത് അപ്പുറത്തേക്ക് പിടിച്ച് തിരിക്കുന്ന പോലെ ഒക്കെ തോന്നി ഞാൻ അവിടെ നിന്ന് അലറി ഞാൻ ഇപ്പൊ മരിച്ചു പോവുക എന്നൊക്കെ പറഞ്ഞു ഒച്ചെടുത്തു അങ്ങനെയാണ് അവരെന്നെ ആദ്യമായിട്ട് പെരിന്തൽമണ്ണ ആശുപത്രി കൊണ്ടുപോയത് അവിടെ അഡ്മിറ്റ് ചെയ്തു അവരെനിക്ക് മാനസിക പ്രശ്നങ്ങൾ കൊടുക്കുന്ന മരുന്ന് തന്നു കുത്തിവെച്ചു അപ്പം ഗ്ലൂക്കോസ് ഒക്കെ തന്നു എന്തോ ഈ സംഭവത്തിനൊക്കെ ശേഷമാണ് ഞാൻ ഈ സ്ഥിരം പാമ്പുകളെ സ്വപ്നം കണ്ടു തുടങ്ങിയത് അങ്ങനെ പല നിറത്തിലുള്ള പാമ്പുകൾ ഇലകളില്ലാത്തൊരു മരത്തിൽ ചുറ്റിയിരിക്കുന്ന പോലെ അതുപോലെ അതുപോലെ തന്നെ ഞാൻ നല്ലൊരു ജിന്നിനെ സ്വപ്നം കാണാൻ തുടങ്ങി ചെറിയൊരു ജിന്ന് സത്യം പറഞ്ഞാൽ എനിക്ക് തോന്നുന്നത് അതിനു ശേഷമാണ് ഞാൻ മനസ്സറിഞ്ഞ് ഖുറാൻ വായിക്കാനും പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കാനും വൃത്തിയായിരിക്കാനൊക്കെ കുറെ കൂടെ ശ്രദ്ധ കൊടുത്തു എന്ന് തോന്നുന്നു ആ ജിന്നിനെ എനിക്ക് ഒഴിവാക്കാൻ പറ്റിയിട്ടില്ല ശരിക്കും ഇങ്ങനെയൊക്കെ സംഭവിക്കുന്ന ആ ജിന്നെന്റെ ശരീരത്തിൽ ഉള്ളതുകൊണ്ടാണെന്നാണ് എനിക്ക് തോന്നാറ് കൂട്ടത്തില് ഞാനിങ്ങനെ സ്ഥിരം പാമ്പുകളെയും സ്വപ്നം കാണും എന്തോ പാമ്പുകളെ കാണുന്നത് മാത്രം എനിക്ക് സ്വപ്നമായിട്ട് ഒരിക്കലും തോന്നാറില്ല ഉറക്കത്തിൽ നിന്ന് ഞെട്ടി എണീക്കുമ്പോഴാണ് ഞാൻ സ്വപ്നം കണ്ടായിട്ട് എനിക്ക് മനസ്സിലാവുന്നത് ഞങ്ങളുടെ ഈ സ്ഥലം ഒരു സർപ്പക്കാവായിരുന്നേ ഇപ്പോഴും ഞാൻ പാമ്പുകളെ സ്വപ്നം കാണാറുണ്ട് ഇപ്പൊ രണ്ടു ദിവസം മുന്നേ ഒരു പാമ്പ് ഇങ്ങനെ ചുരുണ്ടുകൂടി കിടക്കുന്നത് ഞാൻ കണ്ടു കറുത്ത പാമ്പുകളെയും നല്ല വണ്ണമുള്ള പാമ്പുകളെയും ഈ കളത്തില് അങ്ങനെയൊക്കെ ഞാൻ കാണാറുണ്ട് ഞാൻ കളിക്കാൻ പോകുമ്പോഴും എന്റെ ചുറ്റും പാമ്പുകളുള്ളതായിട്ട് എനിക്ക് ഇങ്ങനെ തോന്നാറുണ്ട് ഞാൻ എവിടെ ഉണ്ടോ അവിടെ ഒക്കെ പാമ്പ് ഉള്ളത് പോലെ അതുകൊണ്ട് എനിക്കിപ്പോ പേടിയൊന്നുമില്ല ആ പാമ്പുകൾ എന്നെ ഇങ്ങനെ പിന്തുടരുന്ന പോലെയാണ് എനിക്ക് തോന്നാറ് ചിലപ്പോ എന്നെ കടിക്കാൻ വരും പക്ഷെ എനിക്ക് പേടിയില്ല അതിനെ കുറിച്ച് പുറത്തു വെച്ച് ഇങ്ങനെ കണ്ടാലും ഞാൻ ഇങ്ങനെ നോക്കി നിക്ക മാത്രാണ് ചെയ്യാറ് പക്ഷെ ഇപ്പൊ ഇങ്ങനത്തെ ചിന്തകളിലൊക്കെ മാറ്റങ്ങൾ ഉണ്ട് കേട്ടോ ഇപ്പൊ അങ്ങനെ കരയാറൊന്നുമില്ല അതിന് മാത്രം സങ്കടമൊന്നും ഇപ്പൊ വരാറില്ല എനിക്ക് എപ്പോഴും ഒരു നല്ല പങ്കുകൂട്ടിയാണ് എനിക്കറിയാം ഞാൻ മറ്റുള്ളവരിൽ നിന്ന് എന്തൊക്കെയോ മാറ്റങ്ങളുള്ള ഒരാളാണ് ഞാൻ എപ്പോഴും വിശ്വസിക്കുന്നത് ദൈവം എനിക്ക് പ്രത്യേകം ശക്തികൾ നൽകിയിട്ടുണ്ടെന്നാണ് വിശ്വസിക്കുന്നല്ല ശരിക്കും അല്ലാവ് എനിക്ക് എല്ലാം ചെയ്യാനുള്ള കഴിവ് നൽകിയിട്ടുണ്ട് മുമ്പ് എനിക്ക് എപ്പോഴും എല്ലാത്തിനും ഒരു തരം പേടിയായിരുന്നു ഇപ്പൊ എനിക്ക് അത്തരം പ്രശ്നങ്ങളൊന്നും തോന്നില്ല ഇപ്പൊ ഞാൻ ശരിക്കും ശ്രമിക്കുന്നത് എപ്പോഴും നല്ല വൃത്തിയായിരിക്കാനും പിന്നെ പ്രാർത്ഥനകളൊക്കെ കൃത്യമായി ചെയ്യണം എന്ന് വലിയ ആഗ്രഹമുണ്ട് എന്റെ പ്രായത്തിലുള്ള എല്ലാ പെൺകുട്ടികളുടെയും വിവാഹമൊക്കെ കഴിഞ്ഞു പക്ഷെ ആരുടെ വിവാഹമായാലും ഈ പെൺകുട്ടികളെ വീട് വിട്ടു പോകുന്ന കാണുമ്പോ എനിക്ക് വല്ലാതെ സങ്കടം തോന്നാറുണ്ട് കണ്ണൊക്കെ വല്ലാതെ അറിയും ഇപ്പൊ വരയ്ക്കുന്ന പോലെ അങ്ങനെയൊക്കെ തോന്നും ഈ മരുന്ന് കഴിക്കണോണ്ട് എനിക്കൊരു പേടിയുണ്ട് കല്യാണത്തിന് ശേഷം ഞാൻ മരുന്ന് കഴിച്ചാല് അവര് വിചാരിക്കില്ലേ എനിക്കെന്തോ പ്രശ്നമുണ്ടെന്ന് പക്ഷെ പെരുന്തമണ്ണല് ഡോക്ടർ പറഞ്ഞത് കല്യാണം കഴിക്കുന്നതിന് കുഴപ്പമൊന്നുമില്ല എന്തിനുള്ള മരുന്നാന്ന് ചോദിച്ചാ തലവേദനയ്ക്കുള്ളതാണെന്നെല്ലാം പറയാ പക്ഷെ അവിടെയൊക്കെ ചെന്നിട്ട് മരുന്നൊക്കെ കഴിക്കണ നാണക്കേടല്ലേ അല്ലേ അതുകൊണ്ട് ഞാൻ പറഞ്ഞു മരുന്നൊക്കെ തീർന്നിട്ട് മതി കല്യാണം 
ഈ ഭാര്യമാര് മരിച്ച ആൾക്കാരൊക്കെ ഉണ്ടാവുമല്ലോ കുട്ടികളൊക്കെ ഉള്ള എനിക്കത് നല്ല ഇപ്പൊ കുഴപ്പമൊന്നുമില്ല ഇവർക്കും കുഴപ്പമൊന്നുമില്ല Okay, so that was our first story. Can people please use the chat function to write down three words that reflect their experience of watching that story, any memories you might have, anything that you feel, thank you. Thanks, Rajana, that's great. You can see in the chat function to the right-hand side, um, where it just says chat and you can click on there and you can add your comments. It'd be very interesting to see what people um, have. I'll just give you a couple of minutes to do that before we move on to the next story. Anaga, you can join in too. <laughs> I know you're hiding there somewhere. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> just three words please thank you Vishnu that's great thank you so we use this exercise this is called tagging and we use this exercise quite a lot when we're trying to collect data about people's experiences of digital stories so I'm modeling um, a methodology that we use in our own work by asking you to participate But it's something that's very interesting. You see themes emerging quite a lot. So if any of you are thinking of using digital storytelling in your own work or your own research, this is one way that you can get very quick audience participation and catch some of the impressionistic data that people have around these kind of stories. It's quite a good little tool. Okay. Please feel free to join in on this. We're getting some very, so fear comes up a lot. Stigma comes up a lot. Shame, yeah, thanks Agna. Okay, so as you, as you continue to populate that, um, just um, another um, mm. perhaps interesting reflection of the creation of these stories compared to the methodologies that we would normally use. Um, usually we ask participants to develop their own visuals for their narratives, for their stories. And in this particular project, because of course we couldn't go back to India, we couldn't go back to Kerala to continue the work with the participants. What we did was, um, and we couldn't access the participants either, what we did was we decided that we would experiment with the with the normal processes that we have so we um we thought we might use a work with an illustrator a uk based illustrator who'd already worked with people who had um been survivors of trauma and she and i worked together on developing the visuals for these stories so they are hand drawn visuals and we thought it would be really um interesting to develop a consistent visual aesthetic across all of the stories so the next story you'll see is actually um has a, a that similar mono monochrome kind of hand-drawn feeling to it so that's why you're seeing stories that look alike and in fact when you go and look at the rest of the stories you'll see that's consistent across all of them so i just want to show you one more story And then we'll just do the tagging exercise again. Uh, and then that'll just leave us with a couple of minutes to have a quick, a quick Q&A and perhaps one, one more question from me. Okay, so let me just attempt to find the other story. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is, thank you so much. So this is our second story. It's called Zest for Life. Slightly different from the other one. So I'll start playing that now. Ooh. Hopefully. Let me play that. There we go. Different title of the article is Yam. 
അതിൽ നിന്നൊക്കെ വിജയം കിട്ടുന്നതൊക്കെ എനിക്ക് വളരെ താല്പര്യമുള്ളതാണ് കുട്ടിക്കാലം മുതലേ ഞാൻ അങ്ങനെയൊക്കെ തന്നെയാണ് ഇഷ്ടമുള്ളതൊക്കെ ചെയ്തുകൊണ്ടേ സിനിമകൾക്ക് പോകും ഭക്ഷണങ്ങൾ പരീക്ഷിക്കും യാത്രകൾക്ക് പോകും അങ്ങനെയൊക്കെയായിരുന്നു പിന്നെ ഒരു പെർഫെക്ഷൻസ് കൂടിയായിരുന്നു എന്തെങ്കിലുമൊക്കെ ചെയ്ത അതിനൊരു പൂർണ്ണത വരണമെന്ന് എനിക്കെപ്പോഴും ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു അതിനൊരു ചീത്തവശം കൂടിയുണ്ട് പൂർണ്ണത ഒരിക്കലും കിട്ടില്ല എന്ന് തോന്നുന്ന ഒരു കാര്യത്തിലേക്ക് ഞാൻ പിന്നെ തിരിഞ്ഞു നോക്കില്ല അങ്ങനെ ഒരു പിശാജ് ലെവലിൽ കൂടിയിട്ട് ഇപ്പോ കുറച്ച് വർഷങ്ങളായി എൽ ബി ഐക്ക് പ്രിപ്പയർ ചെയ്ത സമയത്താണ് ആദ്യത്തെ നന്നായിട്ട് പക്ഷെ കുറച്ച് കഴിഞ്ഞപ്പോ എനിക്ക് എഴുതാനോ വായിക്കാനോ പഠിക്കാനോ ഒന്നിനും പറ്റാണ്ട എന്താ അറിയുന്നുണ്ടായിരുന്നു അങ്ങനെ ആദ്യത്തെ അറ്റംപ്റ്റിൽ മാർക്ക് വളരെ കുറവായിരുന്നു പക്ഷെ എനിക്ക് തന്നെ തോന്നി ഒന്നൂടി ശ്രമിച്ചാൽ കിട്ടുമായിരുന്നു എന്നിട്ടൊരു ഒരു ഉത്സാഹം വരുന്നുണ്ടായിരുന്നില്ല ഒന്നിനും പറ്റുന്നുണ്ടായിരുന്നില്ല അവിടെ ആയിരുന്നു എല്ലാത്തിന്റെ തുടക്കം എന്റെ ഒരു ബന്ധു പറഞ്ഞനുസരിച്ചിട്ടാണ് അമ്മേനെ ഒരു സൈക്കോളജിസ്റ്റിന് സൈക്കാട്രിസ്റ്റിന് കാണിക്കാൻ എന്ന് തീരുമാനിക്കുന്നത് അങ്ങനെയാണ് ഞാൻ ഡോക്ടർ ദയെ കാണുന്നത് അദ്ദേഹം എനിക്ക് ചികിത്സ നൽകി പക്ഷെ എന്റേത് വിഷാദ രോഗത്തിന്റെ ലക്ഷണങ്ങളായിരുന്നു എന്ന് അദ്ദേഹം മനസ്സിലാക്കിയത് കുറച്ചു കഴിഞ്ഞാണ് പക്ഷെ എന്തോ ഒരു മോട്ടിവേഷൻ കാരണം ഞാൻ എക്സാം ഒന്നുകൂടി എഴുതി അതിൽ പാസ്സായി പിന്നെ ഒരു ആവേശമായിരുന്നു പുതിയൊരു സ്ഥലത്ത് പോവാ പുതിയ ആൾക്കാരെ കാണാം പുതിയ ജീവിതം തന്നെ തുടങ്ങാം അങ്ങനെയൊക്കെ എന്റെ കാര്യങ്ങൾ ഞാൻ തന്നെ സ്വയം ചെയ്യാൻ തുടങ്ങി അത് തന്നെയായിരുന്നു എനിക്ക് ഇഷ്ടവും പക്ഷെ അത് ആ സമയത്ത് കുറെ മാറ്റങ്ങൾ ഉണ്ടാക്കി അങ്ങനെ കോഴ്സ് തുടങ്ങി ഒരു സെമസ്റ്റർ കഴിഞ്ഞപ്പോൾ തന്നെ ഞാൻ ആകെ തളർന്നുപോയി അങ്ങനെ ഒരു പരീക്ഷ എനിക്ക് മര്യാദയ്ക്ക് എഴുതാൻ പറ്റിയില്ല റിസൾട്ട് വന്നപ്പോൾ അതിൽ തോക്കുകയും ചെയ്തു ഇതെങ്ങനെ നിയന്ത്രിക്കാൻ അറിയാൻ വേണ്ടി ഡോക്ടർ പിന്നെയും പോയപ്പോഴാണ് എനിക്ക് കുറച്ചുകൂടി കാര്യങ്ങൾ മനസ്സിലായത് എന്താന്ന് വെച്ചാൽ എൻ്റെ രോഗം പൂർണ്ണമായിട്ടും സൈക്കോളജിക്കൽ അല്ല അതിന് പിന്നിലെ കുറെ കാര്യങ്ങളുണ്ട് ഞാൻ വളർന്നു വന്ന രീതി എൻ്റെ കുട്ടിക്കാലത്തെ അനുഭവങ്ങൾ വിഷമങ്ങൾ എൻ്റെ ഒരു മാനസിക ഘടന അങ്ങനെ കുറച്ച് കാര്യങ്ങൾ അതുകൊണ്ട് തന്നെ ഞാൻ മരുന്നുകളുടെ ഒപ്പം ഫാമിലി തെറാപ്പി കൂടി സ്റ്റാർട്ട് ചെയ്തു കുറച്ച് പതർച്ചകൾ ഉണ്ടായപ്പോൾ ആത്മീയതയൊക്കെ ഞാൻ ഉപേക്ഷിച്ചിരുന്നു പക്ഷെ അതിലേക്ക് തിരിച്ചു വന്നപ്പോൾ രോഗം ഭേദപ്പെടാൻ അത് കുറെ സഹായിച്ചു എനിക്ക് തോന്നിയിട്ടുള്ള വേറൊരു കാര്യം എന്ന് വെച്ചാൽ നമ്മളൊരു നമ്മുടെ അവസ്ഥ തുറന്നു പറയുമ്പോൾ അത് എല്ലാവരും ഒരു മുൻവിധിയോടെ നോക്കിക്കൊണ്ട് അത് തുറന്നു പറയാനുള്ള ഒരു വിഷമം ഉണ്ടാക്കും അത് കുറെ കാലങ്ങൾ നമ്മുടെ മനസ്സിലൊരു തടസ്സമായിട്ട് നിൽക്കും നമസ്കാരം Okay. Am I back? Yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, the the session will end fairly shortly, but if if people could just take a, a one minute to tag that story, I'd be very grateful and very interested. So just just three words. And as you're doing that, um, I'll just I'll just wrap up. I'll just be wrapping up the session. Um, we're actually going to finish. I think you guys are just going to finish here in the next minute or so. And then there's a short break before you go back to resume to, I believe it's the main stage, Arnaga. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. This is not the main stage. This is a breakout room. You'll we'll go back to the... Uh, for the next session, we have to go to the main stage. Great. Can you tell me how long the break is, Arnaga? 10 minutes. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you guys. All your comments are coming in now. Um, oh, very interesting comments. Very interesting tags coming in. Okay, so just just to recap really. Um this project um gave us a way of working that was um very challenging because of COVID. It's the same 
challenges I think we've all faced where, you know, ideally we will be in the on the ground doing our field work, but obviously we couldn't travel. But then those challenges led to some very interesting, I think, opportunities in terms of the way that we format these kind of stories and co-develop them. So that's been a, for, 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 for myself, I know, and, and the team that I've worked with, it's been a very interesting opportunity. Um, I hope it's given you some ideas um, and maybe some thoughts about how you could use digital storytelling in your own um, in your own organisations, in your own research. Um, you're very welcome to reach out to me if you need to discuss any of those ideas at any point. In the meantime, we are coming to the end of our session. If you have any questions that are uh, very uh, burning, I'd be very happy to take them now. Having having said that, if you'd like to put them in the chat room, um, Anaga, are we are we capturing this chat room um, text somewhere? No, it's being recorded. The session is being recorded. Oh. Right, so I can, we'll be able to see all of these. Okay. Yeah. Does anyone have any very, very urgent or burning questions that they'd like to ask now? Um, I just had a, a doubt actually. You mentioned that um, um, digital uh, is a multimedia approach, and that um, you choose one piece of experience. So for this project, I think I can get a feel of how that one piece of experience is chosen. But in general, is there any strategy? Like if I'm doing it in just a community? Yes, as absolutely. As so we, we normally take a five or seven step approach to the creation of the stories. And what we normally do is we would get, if we're working in the room with people, we would do um, narrative development and we give them some prompts to get them into writing. So, for example, with this, it might be um, think about, you know, a time or think about a memory that you have that's to do with claustrophobia or anxiety or, um, you know, being restricted in some way in your life. So it's a generic prompt and we get them to do perhaps word responses like you're doing now with the tagging quick word responses and then we do, we might do one or two of those or three or four of those depending on the group and then when we get the, the the prompt that people feel most closely connected to we'll get them to talk about it and that'll become the basis of them developing a longer narrative so they might sit we might sit down and say okay thanks for sharing that memory with us Tell us a bit more about that memory. What did it look like? What did it feel like? Who was there? What could you hear? What could you smell? So we might we might we might ask them about their sensory recollections or um, recollections of, of other protagonists in the story and so on and so forth. And then we'd get them to write a longer narrative, somewhere between five and seven hundred and fifty words, that actually ex expand on that particular experience. And now you're getting into that one experience that the story wraps around. And then we share that in what we call a story circle. So people share their story with other people in the group. And those other people in the group then offer them some thoughts on the story. And it's very supportive. So they might say, well, you know, I really liked the story, but I don't really know enough about you and how you felt there. Or I don't really know enough about what the outcome of this has been. Or what was, was there a point of change? And if so, what was it? And what do you know now? So we'll we'll take them through that process and it might take a day. Sometimes it might take a day and a half. Sometimes it might take two days. It depends on the group. Um, and we also teach them how to use the software. But I can send you this, Rajani, if you if you can get my um you'll be able to get my email address through the through the um the whole conference, I'd be happy to send you our our steps. Mm -hmm. It's okay cool. if you can put it in the chat box. Uh, Anika, are you okay to put that in while I answer questions? Is that all right? I think I'll be able to get your email from the from uh, your university site. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have it. We have it. Um, Vishnu is asking how it's a, how digital story is a better method com compared to things like in-depth interviews. I think Vishnu, it's just that it's creative and that what we see with people is um, the way they want to tell their story. So we've said already, this is really about one 
incident often that it seems to be very important to people and what we're doing really is we're putting the hands we're, we're putting the storytelling in the hands of the person who's experienced the story and I think with interviewing often you know it's it's quite it's quite didactic often you know and it's not it's not it's not particularly creative so we're quite interested in seeing what people do visually in their stories what they do with sound in their stories how they develop the narrative in their story. So it's, it's, it's a bit more playful, I would say. Um, what are the benefits over other methods? I think those things that I've discussed, I think that it's, it's um, fundamentally about reversing or disrupting the hierarchies that we traditionally see in research around who holds the power to ask the question, who holds the power to tell the story and so on and so forth. I wanted to ask everybody one more question. Um, I wondered how you thought you might use this method in your own organisations um, and whether you had any ideas around that. Um, having, having been now participated in this, participated in the tagging, do you think there are ways in which you could um, adapt this or use this? Or do you feel like there would be barriers? And if so, what would they be? Feel free to use either the chat room or just jump jump onto video and and we can talk. I would be um, a bit worried about whether I would lead people. Um, uh -huh. I'm thinking about um, suppose I'm using it in my classroom or some, uh, in a workshop in my context. I would need to push the participants a bit. Um, and I, I would be a little bit worried, but I would lead them in some way. And is there any way I can not do that? So. Tell us who your participants would be, Rajni, and we'll go from there. So uh, my students, I, I teach PG students, so uh -huh. graduate students, but though they are postgraduate students, it's very different here than in the UK. So um, that, um, so that would be one concern that I would have. In what discipline, can I ask, or what subject? Psychology. 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 Oh. This would be a great method, fascinating method to use with psychology students, I'm sure. Um, okay, in terms of leading them, I think it's really, it's really down to the way that you prompt them at the start and the amount of time you give them to think through their story. So I would say if you wanted to use the methods you could you could use more prompts you could use so and it's the type of prompts you use so sometimes we use very simple tools for example we'll use post-its if you're in a room with them are you able to teach face to face at the moment yeah okay. yeah yes okay so if you're in a room with them and you use post-its and you give them the first prompt so say that say the say you wanted to i don't know talk about mental health with them and you wanted to ask them initially, OK, when you think of mental health, what words jump into your head? A bit like the tagging we've done now. But you get them to write them, write all the words down, maybe on a, I don't know, like a sheet of A4. And they do that very quickly. And then you get them to share that a little bit. And then you could say to them, OK, you know, the words that you have there, I'd like you to think about which ones are mo most important to you at the moment and why and then just circle those or make them brighter or make them bigger do another sheet but enlarge so you start to scale scale the, the the connection they have to these ideas so you could do that for example and then you start to look at you know okay where is their emphasis where is their focus as young as young people at the moment okay so now tell me why you think these words are the ones jumping out at you and you might get memory or you might get, you know, day to day lived experience or you might get future facing concerns, you know, and you can start to think about those as the beginnings of a story. OK, so from those roots, you know, let's move on to write down 30, 30 words, so a couple of sentences to do with the, the word that is most you know, evocative for you at the moment or most important to you at the moment, write down 30 words and then share those 30 words with the group. So slowly, step by step, so that you're not feeling like you're you're going to lead, 
but you've just given them enough time and space for them to grow into the story. You know, the only the only time that you need to be guiding really is on, okay, does this story, you know, hang together? So something that we do is when we get to the point where they've got, I don't know, 30 words, we might say, okay, let's try and make that into tell the story verbally and then try and make seven, 750 words. And then from that, storyboard it. So we'll give them a piece of paper with four boards on it, four squares. And we'll say, right, storyboard that story now. Which bit goes where? Is there a point of change in the story? Is there a clear beginning? Is there a clear outcome or a clear lesson that's been learned or a clear change? at the end they can draw inside those boxes so now they're starting to think about what does the story look like visually is that helpful so you sort of ex you're really extrapolating the process so there's plenty of space in it so that you don't feel like you're saying you know because of course the natural tendency is to say oh i don't know about that <laughs> you know i don't i'm not feeling that story at all that's not the story i want to hear <laughs> you know and um we've all got that tendency we want to hear another story but it's important that they tell their story you know so um but again i'd be very happy to, to talk to you more about that that process and, and give you some ideas but do you use any creative methods with them at the moment I train in theater of the opera and theater for living, so I use that. Oh, great! Uh, um, yeah, but even there, uh, I think the term using the term oppression just gives me very unidimensional sort of thing. So maybe I'll, mm. I, I would like to try this. I would. Why would want to learn more about this actually? Yeah, it's fascinating. This. Did you say theater of the oppressed? Yes. Oh, Augustus Powell. August of all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, David Diamond from yeah. Canada he made a uh, yeah. theater for living. So he had come to India and uh, had attended the workshop. So oh, wow, fantastic! <laughs> you, that's great. So great. Okay, okay. Yeah, though. I mean, they're very interesting. I mean, one of the things that we did at, at the um, at the academy was we actually used a theatrical intervention. We used um, uh, an old Sicilian. Um, method for solving commu communities solving their own own issues. We actually did that in because um, I, I was in Kenya until very recently, and I was working in the in the in the slums out there. And we actually used that method in one of the communities. Um, and it was um, you choose you choose a, a sort of a a jury. It's like a judge and jury system, and um, from community members, or they self select even better, of course, because then it's emancipatory rather than top down. Same thing, disrupting hierarchies of knowledge, disrupting hierarchies of, of power. And um, we picked one of the one of the youngest community members picked himself to be the judge. And we created digital stories about waste because there's a very big slum um, uh, dump site there. Um, what do you want to do with the dump site, basically? And then the community came up with the with the solutions and then we put them to a community forum and Cheryl, are you able to turn off your audio please thank you um and um and then so we yeah we did like a judge and jury thing and they voted for the solutions that they wanted within their community it's very interesting there's actually some very interesting um uh information about that on our storytelling academy website as well and you can see some of our stories there has anyone else got any other questions or if you wish you can put them in the chat box okay so i think uh i think that is where we're going to end it then